everybody, welcome back. My name is Pigeon and this is part two. Let me let me see where we left off. Um... So they sold my parents. We gotta take these gonads out right now or they might become cancer by the time your kid turns 11. To be continued. Cancer. Alright, so here's the deal. When I was about six months of age, the doctors opened me up. Not opened me up. They stuck a needle in me and did a test and they drew some blood and they discovered like I said earlier I had XY chromosomes and they told my parents that they needed to do surgery and in order to get this surgery to go to make and in order to get my parents so they opened me up no uh, all right so the doctors did a test discovered I had XY chromosomes but they also dis discovered that I had internal testes. Now they weren't going to tell my parents that I had internal testes because this would destroy the myth that they were trying to build for my parents that I was a perfectly normal little girl. And by their standards, being an intersex person was not normal. And if they were going to tell my parents the truth, they risked my parents raising me differently and me growing up in distress and all this stuff that's in the medical literature, which I think is a bunch of... But anyhow, they decided instead of telling my parents the truth, which is, I had, which is that I had internal testes that weren't even going to function as testes as I grew older because of my condition, androgen insensitivity syndrome means I'm insensitive to androgens and one of the most well-known androgens is testosterone so because i'm insensitive to testosterone my body would only develop on like a quote-unquote female trajectory right so instead of telling my parents the truth of this like this complicated story which isn't that complicated they lied and they said look mr and mrs pigeon your kid has these has this body and everything's okay we did some tests we did some blood work and we and you know their body is almost all the way to being a female, but they didn't get all the way quite there in the uterus while they were developing in your belly, Mrs. Pigeon. So we need to help her along. And what we noticed is that she has these um, gonads, which are like the things in a body that are, they are, what are gonads? Okay, let's start over. So. Your daughter, she has gonads. And these gonads are pre-ovarian ovaries. So, I read now because I just itched my, scratched myself. Oh, my feet hurt. Okay. So, your daughter, she has these pre-formed ovaries. Right? Ah, the osteoporosis is real. So they told my parents, your daughter has preformed ovaries, and these preformed ovaries, or let's call them gonads, these gonads are going to develop cancer by the time your daughter hits puberty. So why don't you let us go in there and take these out to prevent that risk of your daughter getting cancer in the future? I was around six months of age at this point. My parents, wanting what's best for me, gave them the green light, and they went in and took out what they were calling preformed ovaries or gonads, but in reality were internal testes. Testes that never descended and that stayed put in the abdomen and that, like I said, wouldn't even function really as testes. My body would have blocked most of the androgens that they would have produced, if they produced any, and they would have, my body would have converted most of those androgens into estrogen. That's just part of the magic of my condition which is an intersex condition called androgen and insensitivity syndrome. So instead of telling my parents the truth, they said, we're gonna go in there, we're gonna help prevent cancer, we're gonna get rid of these gonads that are preformed ovaries. Your daughter's fine, she's normal. They don't like to tell parents of intersex kids that they have an intersex kid, that they have testes, and, and that was that's really it. That's like the main thing. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal, but they really, Fear giving our parents the truth 
it's this paternalistic culture where doctor knows best, doctor needs to keep the parents in the shadows and keep them in the dark about mostly everything. We'll take care of everything with our fancy degrees and we're not going to tell you everything because we don't think you're capable of making the right quote unquote decisions. So the right decisions, that's to be debated, right? What I think is the right decision for intersex kids is totally different than what doctors think is the right decision, most doctors. And it's also probably different than what parents think would be the right decision if given fully informed information so they can make fully informed consent. So when I was six months of age, they went in and they took out those gonads under the guise of that, of that, of that, that, under the guise of it preventing possible cancer in the future. So I recover from that surgery. I'm about six months old. I go home and again, my parents are told, everything's fine with your daughter, but bring her back for a checkup. We want to check in with her. So I went back for a checkup and it seemed that everything was okay according to the doctors, but there was a new problem they discovered and that was that my clitoris was just a little bit too big for their standards. These are the doctors again. So they scheduled me for surgery when I was four years old to undergo a clitorectomy because my clitoris, according to my medical records, when stretched was a centimeter and a half. Let me say that again. They scheduled me for a surgery when I was four years old because my clitoris was supposedly too large and according to my medical records when stretched it was only a centimeter and a half. So the standards for intersex care state that any phallus, which is a clitoris or a penis, any phallus structure that goes past 1.5 centimeters when stretched and is below 3 centimeters I want to say when stretched falls into this sort of no man's territory and no person's territory and in that range which is this very small range we're talking 1.5 centimeters in that territory surgery is usually what is necessary so in my case they decided I would grow up with this large clitoris and I would just be looking down at myself and I wouldn't understand what my gender was and how could I be a female if I have this big clit and blah 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 so they decided to tell my parents hey your kid the clit it's not that normal we need to go in there and we need to just make it a little bit smaller don't worry no we know you've heard it's a sensitive thing but don't worry because we're going to take care to make sure that the nerve stays intact and we're just going to get rid of that extra stuff, all that fluff that no one really needs in a clitoris anyways. Just don't worry about it. We got it. Why you always lying? So my parents, young and afraid probably, and really wanting what's best for me, thinking the doctors are saying my daughter isn't normal. I want her to be normal. Okay, go ahead and do this. So they do a clitorectomy on me. I was four years old and the doctors removed my entire clitoris. Now, yes, <laughs> I had to pause because it's, it's a savage move. These doctors out here are savage and they're still doing this every single day in my city of Chicago, in your city, and across the world. Every single day, kids are getting intersex genital mutilation and that's what happened to me when I was four intersex starter. and remember intersex surgeries oh my god and remember intersex stories not surgeries Bye. so what is Intersex is a condition when someone is born with sex chromosomes, genitalia, or reproductive organs that aren't easily categorized as men or women.